communities heard as we look at the education system moving forward. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to participate in this journal debate. And it's my pleasure to follow Honourable Jenny Salisa, whom I respect as the Minister of Ethnic Communities, and I do appreciate her presence at a number of occasions. Uh, it was a very good speech, but I don't agree with a lot of facts what she has uh, proposed in her speech. First of all, she mentioned that uh, they promised 6,400 houses. I think the promise was 10,000 houses. And what we have got in first year, just 18 houses. And those 18 houses were consented and started construction during the Nationals' reign. So I totally disagree with the minister what she is trying to claim. Uh, the last point which minister picked up was on the ethnic communities and the language. Uh, here I would like to request her, and uh, the point is that we have got a mem private member's bill by Honorable Nikki Kay, which gives opportunities for the primary and secondary uh, intermediate schools to opt for second language. And we know because we are in opposition, we don't have the majority. I request her to support that bill of Honorable Nikki Kay to make sure, because she is consulting, but we are proposing the bill which will ensure that the second language can be an option for primary and intermediate school. I hope she will listen to it. Further, she mentioned about uh, championing uh, about South Auckland. I would like to share some figures with her which are very important. From, uh, if we compare the waiting list for the housing in December 2017, uh, the waiting list was 58 in Hawick. Today it is 100. In 2017, in Mangari, Otahu, the waiting list was 271. Now it is 431. In Manurewa, it was 278. Today, it is 377. If we total up about uh, all the areas in South Auckland, the total waiting list in December 2017 was 1,008, and today it is 1,546. The point which minister brought in, that people are sleeping in the cars and the parks and garages, I agree with her. But nothing has improved under this government, which claimed that they are the champions for the people and they are looking after the people. Another point which I would like to touch upon is that uh, increasing living cost, which is biggest issue in South Auckland. When I go out and about, people are talking about how much cost is increasing. Rents are increasing, petrol prices is increasing, and number of other, if they go to the grocery, where earlier they used to spend a certain amount, today they are spending more than that. Uh, for the benefit of some of the government benches, the petrol price I would like to share, that if you filled up a petrol tank of 50 liters uh, last year, it was approximately $90. Today, it is $120, approximately, not exactly, but approximately. That shows that there has been a substantial increase in petrol prices. And when this side of the house asks question about it, none of the ministers have that answer. I hope this will clarify them that there is uh, uh, what, what is the price right now. Mr. Speaker, another point which I would like to touch upon is uh, Honorable Grant Robertson mentioned about the poll yesterday. But he did not mention a very important point that the business confidence is going down. 41% of people surveyed said they don't have any confidence in this government. The businesses will be doing worse than what they are doing today. So that point Grant Robertson did not touch because it did not benefit him. He could not answer why the business confidence we are losing. Another thing which we need to understand is because of the loosening of this business confidence, the dollar is dropping, and that is why the petrol is increasing. And the petrol price is increasing, that in increases the GST also. And this government is not committing at all to reduce either GST or excise, 
which is really hurting the back pocket of our ordinary Kiwi and which is hurting the families. We know that in this uh, country we have got... Order, order. The member's time has expired. The Honourable Damien O'Connor. Mr Speaker, I've been to a few...